from KSAC 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, police on the lookout for a hit and run driver who crashed into a woman overnight. A big FDA meeting today could grant emergency approval for a COVID vaccine in the U.S. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cold 43 degrees for now, but we're going to check in with Justin to see if we're going to have at least one more pretty day. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is December 10th. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you got to enjoy yesterday afternoon. It got pretty warm, but it was nice. And another cool down overnight. I mean, just we're talking these wild 30, 25, 30 degree swings in temperatures, Justin. Almost 40 degrees yeah, in right? some cases. I mean, it is it is huge. That's going to come to an end tonight. We're going to see temperatures quite a bit warmer as we get into tomorrow morning. Okay. And then we start to look at some rain chances. So that's the change that we're looking at here. Uh, another warm day today, though. We'll probably be back in the mid 70s. Yesterday was around 80, a little cooler today. And then more clouds this evening and tonight and then a damp morning commute tomorrow. It's going to be wet, probably drizzle some showers around. And right now we're looking at 34 Boulevard, 45 Bernie Sage, 38 Rio Medina, 33 Kerrville. This looks familiar, right? This is what we've been looking at last couple of mornings. Uh, no change, at least this morning. Forecast. 52, 9 o'clock, 68, noontime, 77 by 3 o'clock. You will notice, again, more clouds as we get later into today. We're going to give you a timeline for that rain tomorrow and then set you up for the week and let you know how those temperatures are looking then. We'll more on that in just a bit. But let's get over to Nick this morning and take a look at your morning commute. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. All right, we got a lot of green on the screen here. Talk to my buddy Israel Trans Guide. No construction out there, no accidents, just a couple of stalled vehicles on 281 and Hildebrand going both north and southbound. So just be careful. Sometimes 281 at Hildebrand gets very windy there. So be careful with this vehicle I'm about to show you here. This looks like it's going to be the southbound lanes of 281, but there's one of those stalled vehicles right there on the left shoulder. Pretty dangerous. Keep that in mind if you're heading that direction. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Yeah, and that was just coming out of that curve, too, so it is tricky. Thank you very much, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to find a person they say hit a woman with a vehicle while she was on the road. Happened just after 10 last night at Goliad and Southeast Military Drive just off I-37. SAPD says a woman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the driver of the vehicle took off after the incident. San Antonio police investigating a crash where a man and woman were hit and killed while they are rocking across the street. Police say both the man and woman were in their 50s and 60s and were trying to cross that street, one of them walking with a stick. It happened near Culebra and 19th Street over on the west side. Investigators say they were not in a crosswalk and had made it across two lanes before being hit. The driver did stop though and help and no charges are expected. Both victims were pronounced dead at the scene, but no identities have been released. The FDA plans to meet today for that public hearing that could determine whether Americans can begin getting immunized for the coronavirus in a matter of days. ABC's Alex Pache has the latest from Washington. This morning, the Pfizer vaccine with its last major hurdle in the U.S. The FDA advisory committee meeting is today. They'll discuss their vaccine findings and vote on emergency authorization. FDA and Pfizer research already show the vaccine is 95% effective. There's much more to learn here. We're operating under very difficult circumstances, but I think under the conditions, uh, we should feel good about where we are right now. But there is an unexpected side effect likely to be one topic of discussion. Out of the thousands in the UK who received the shot, two people, both healthcare workers, had allergic reactions and recovered. Both had a history of severe allergies and carry EpiPens. When the FDA does sign off, 2.9 million doses will be sent out across the country within 24 hours. Potentially much needed aid for healthcare workers. The U.S. had its deadliest day of the pandemic yesterday, more than 3,000 deaths. People still don't think this is a big deal. They think it's kind of fake news. It's not. It's real. The numbers are absolutely real. The L.A. County Everybody Health Director breaking down in tears over the county's growing to death toll. Sorry. Oh, over 8,000 people who were beloved members of their families are not coming back. Hospitalizations nationwide now topping 104,000, with dire staffing shortages now hitting, including in Kansas, where one hospital has 152 frontline workers out with COVID. And we chemically coded a patient when I walked on the unit. We intubated a patient emergently 10 minutes after that. And I still had two patients. 
Even with the vaccine, the latest report from the COVID task force is painting a grim picture. It says a vaccine will not reduce virus spread, hospitalizations, or fatalities until next spring. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. So let's take a look at where we stand with coronavirus here at home in Bear County. The seven day average remains above 1000 cases a day. No new deaths were included in the latest report. There are still hospital beds available in Bear County. 663 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. That includes 15 patients from El Paso. 226 are in the intensive care unit and 119 are on ventilators. While hospitals know how to scale up in space if needed, local leaders say it could trigger state orders that would impact businesses. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help solving a capital murder case that is now nearly a year old. In December of last year, SAPD says 19 year old Aiden Hoffman was shot while at the Echo Apartments in the 13,000 block of O'Connor Road. After he was shot, police say Hoffman was able to drive away but eventually died from his injuries in a nearby Whataburger. If you have any information on who was involved, call Crime Stoppers at 210 224 Stop. You could get a cash reward of up to $5,000. And time now is 436 and 43 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA on your Thursday. A first look at why the hottest holiday gifts this season are also a major target of fraud. Also next, President Donald Trump going back to the courts to try once again to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Outside with live cam. Shorts and flip-flops yesterday afternoon. Back to a coat or a vest this morning. What will happen later on today? We'll get an update on that and uh, yeah. Uh, Justin is talking about an end of the week that includes some cooler, wetter weather. And welcome back. It's 439. President Donald Trump's effort to overturn Joe Biden's win in Wisconsin is returning to the courtroom. Today, hearings are scheduled in both federal and his federal and state lawsuits that seek to invalidate hundreds of thousands of ballots and to give the GOP controlled legislature the power to name President Donald Trump the winner. President Donald Trump's attorneys are urging the courts to act quickly so he can appeal any adverse ruling before members of the Electoral College meet on Monday and cast Wisconsin's 10 votes for Biden. The president is also taking his claim of election fraud to the Supreme Court. He is asking the justices to intervene in a lawsuit brought by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton seeking to invalidate millions of votes in key battleground states. U.S. Senate has failed to stop the Trump administration's arms deal with the United Arab Emirates and includes $23 billion worth of drones, F-35 fighters and other weapons. Republican Senator Rand Paul and Democratic Senators Bob Menendez and Chris Murphy oppose the sale. They worry it will induce fear in the already unstable region. Two resolutions to stop the transactions were put forward to the Senate. But both failed to get the votes. The sales expected to be cleared tomorrow. Menendez says there's still a chance the incoming administration can reverse course on the sale before the weapons are actually delivered. Walmart is selling an at home coronavirus test for as little as $99. The test is only being sold online at walmart.com or from Sam's Club. First, you have to take an online health assessment, which will give you a doctor's order to take the test. The test kit will then be shipped to your home where you'll do your own nasal swab and then send it back. You will receive results via email between 24 to 48 hours after the lab receives your test kit. The at home test is not approved by the FDA, but it does have an emergency use authorization. It's not recommended to be used if you are experiencing difficulty breathing or have other severe symptoms of COVID-19. In that case, it's important to seek emergency medical attention. Since no fans will be allowed to attend Spurs games at least until January 1st, the NBA franchise now says all three of their preseason games this month will be broadcast on TV. That includes this one Saturday night against Oklahoma City on Fox Sports Southwest. That means you'll get to see Patty Mills as he's about to start his 10th season in silver and black. Unfortunately, Patty was unable to return to his home country while the NBA was on hiatus due to Australia's travel restric restrictions during the pandemic. So you see something different when Patty returns to the court this Saturday. New tattoo on his left arm that celebrates his heritage as an indigenous Australian. And go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Excited to see them play. Yeah, it's going to be great to have him back on the tube. Very good. Time now is 442 and 43 degrees. With so many people out of work this year, the one thing you don't want is debt collectors contacting you. But soon, 
They will be able to contact you via social media up next when those new regulations take effect. And as you finish up your Christmas shopping this year, up next, a warning about shopping scams involving some of the season's hottest toys. Welcome back. Time now is 445. There are new warnings on holiday shopping scams involving some of the hottest toys and websites. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big holiday shopping alert. There are new worlds to explore. PlayStation 5, one of the hottest holiday gifts this season, also now a major target for fraud. The Troy, Michigan Police Department sending out an alert that the PS5 is a scammer's dream, advising extreme caution, reporting that one theft actually occurred in front of the police station. And that's not the only scam consumers need to watch out for. Ron Kroll says after he finished buying presents for his grandchildren, he got a call claiming to be from Amazon. It said I had a charge for $799 and some change on my Amazon account. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know to outsmart those holiday scammers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Man, we just can't catch a break, can we? <laughs> One thing after another. It is. And with so many job losses this year, debt is a part of the picture. For some, that means calls from debt collectors. And starting late next year, collectors will also be allowed to contact people by email, text message, and even through social media. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how to manage those communications. Social media, it connects you to family and friends, but soon you might get a message from a debt collector. A year from now, when this new rule takes effect, debt collectors will be able to send an unlimited number of text messages, emails, and hit you up on social media as much as they want as well as call you up to seven times a week, and sometimes maybe more. With a new rule beginning late next year, the ways collection agencies can legally contact you will greatly expand. Trying to collect legitimate debt is perfectly legal, but the industry has a history of aggressive tactics. The problem is debt collectors are notorious for hounding consumers over debts that have already been paid off or were never even owed in the first place. The collection industry welcomes the change, calling it a significant step in updating outdated practices that hurt small businesses and left consumers in the dark. Even with these changes, there are still consumer protections to guard against aggressive and even illegal collections. For example, if a debt collector contacts you, you can request verification of the debt and expect to receive that in the mail in about five days. Also, Texas has a four-year statute of limitations and how long a debt can be collected. Do not pay any part of the debt until you are certain that you owe it. Otherwise, you could accidentally revive old debt you no longer owe. If you don't recognize a charge, check your credit report for possible ID theft. And if you do owe the money but can't afford it, try negotiating a repayment plan you can't afford. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, we feel for you, lady. I know that last shot in the story. Yeah, head in the hands. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Whoa. yeah. Well, let's see how things are looking out there. Uh, earlier, Nick, you were talking about a couple of stalled vehicles. Anything else going on right now? No, other than that, Mark, nothing else going on. Still looking good out there. Other than those stalled vehicles on Hildebrand and 281 going north and southbound there. We got two of them. We have a trans guide footage of one there right at that winding way there. Um, on 281 southbound on the left shoulder. Keep it in mind if you are heading in that direction, it's pretty dangerous. 37 at Jones looking good. 10 at West Avenue looking better right there. East and westbound look great. Uh, I-10 at Woodlawn looking amazing. And I'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. Let's see I-10 at De Zavala on the other side of I-10, northwest side. That's looking good as well. Nick, can I ask you a question you may not have the answer to? Okay. How much longer does that vehicle, <laughs> a, a vehicle have to sit in a place like that before uh, they get a wrecker out there. Well, basically you have about, you have 24 hours. Ah. You know, technically, if an officer wants to green sticker the vehicle, right. you got 24 hours to move it, then we can tow it. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's causing you know traffic like that, we can use our own discretion and tow it out of the way right away. Just someone has to call, an officer has to see it. Got it, okay. Thank you, Nick. Good, Good info. info, thank Be you. Justin. Justin is tracking uh, area lake levels. Yeah, it's it's been a while since we've had significant rain once again. So we got to look at these numbers and Medina 
you know, it's uh, it is struggling now. We're at the 43 percent. It's down about 31 feet from the conservation pool, down 22 feet from last year. Now, Medina tends to do this. We know that, but it has been a dry year and we're seeing the results there. Canyon at 89 percent. It typically does OK. Choke at 36 percent. It's low. Amistad 64 percent. So we can use some rain for sure. Uh, there is a little bit in the forecast. This is the maximum rainfall potential that we're expecting with our next system. And we're talking about a tenth of an inch here in San Antonio at best. So this isn't going to help much. This certainly isn't going to fill up the lakes. Uh, and as you go east, you will see some maybe slightly bigger numbers. Uh, Austin over to LaGrange, maybe up to a quarter of an inch. And I'd say even some of our eastern counties, places like Howesville could get a quarter of an inch out of this next system. It's, it's just not going to be huge. And uh, we still need something more substantial, I think, moving in. And we're not really seeing that in the forecast. 43 degrees right now in San Antonio, 40 Stinson, 48 Kelly. Winds are light this morning. And we're falling off into the 30s again in a few spots. 32 Kerrville, 37 Bandera, 34 in Bolverde, 44 right now in New Braunfels. And then some upper 40s as you get down towards Catula. Uh, Kennedy reporting 54. That may be a bit warm. That may not be a correct reading. 47 in Victoria. Now, the dew point today, this is going to be the change. And this is maybe what you noticed this afternoon. Dew points are low right now. They'll start off really dry, but we'll see a steady increase by the afternoon hours. We're starting to see dew points in the 50s, which still is bad. But by tonight, you'll probably notice the humidity it gets a little more muggy as a cloud surge in out ahead of our next storm system, which right now is uh, sitting over Southern California. You can see the rain that it's now producing Phoenix up to Las Vegas, some snow in the higher elevations there. This is going to take a track off to our north, but there's still enough energy there uh, to get some rain going. So here's what the forecast looks like. Six o'clock today, still probably mostly sunny. Those clouds are trying to work in though a little bit later. And by midnight, we're starting to see some showers out west. And then by seven o'clock, some decent rain chances. We've upped the rain chance to about 40%. So we think the rain chances are good. Again, it just doesn't amount to much. Uh, a wet morning commute tomorrow. We'll also see some drizzle around here. And then by midday, a lot of this is starting to move out. We'll get some clearing late in the day tomorrow. And at this point, the weekend looks pretty good. Forecast for today, temperatures into the mid to upper 70s for highs. We'll see sunny around 3 o'clock, 77. We'll see southeast chilly winds kick in later today. That's what's going to help that dew point rise. 74 tomorrow. 40% chance of rain, some morning drizzle too. 68 on Saturday, mostly sunny. Sunday, we're still thinking there'll be some cloud cover around as another front moves in. But at this point, it looks like if we're going to see any rain, it's probably going to be east of San Antonio. This next front will cool us down into the 50s now, it looks like on Monday. And we'll get yet another front Tuesday into Wednesday. So these, uh, these fronts are like rapid fire here. And it just doesn't give us a whole lot of opportunity for any sort of significant rain, guys. Gotcha, but at least we have a nice afternoon. Yes. And Thanks. from one front to a trio of fronts on our extended forecast. Yeah. For those who want the cold weather, that's good news too. 453, <laughs> 43 degrees. And just up, we're taking a look at who is top trending on the Hollywood Actors list of 2020. We're going to give you that list just ahead. Google releases the top trending artists of 2020, and actor George Clooney says he's having a tough 2020 as well. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. He battled Germans in the movie Greyhound, and he battled COVID-19 in real life. And for that, Google says Tom Hanks was the top trending actor in 2020. Second on the list, but for other reasons, comedian Chris D'Elia, accused of inappropriate behavior by several women. Super Bowl halftime star Shakira was the top trending musician. Oscar winner Parasite, the top trending movie. George Clooney says, yeah, 2020 has been a tough year, but he has hopes for 2021 with a COVID-19 vaccine on its way to becoming widely available. You know, I miss seeing my mom and dad and, you know, they're not young and I want to spend time with them. And, uh, you know, th those kind of things. I, I, I want to, uh, I, I am hopeful about all those things. I'm always optimistic about things. You know, He's also optimistic about his new movie, The Midnight Sky, in which he stars and also day. directs. It's on Netflix Christmas Day. An Oscar winning actor wants to teach you about words we can't say on TV. Nicolas Cage knows a thing or two about cursing. He's done it a lot on screen. And now he'll host the history of swear words, debuting on Netflix in January. Each of the six episodes will look at a different dirty word. And happy birthday today to Kenneth Branagh. The Oscar-nominated actor, writer, and director is 60 today.
while actress and producer Raven Simone is 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. So does that make Nicolas Cage the Bob Ross of profanity? I, I guess. I, I didn't know he was a painter. I don't know if that's part of the, the whole deal. Yeah, I don't know if he's a painter either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out next month. 457, 43 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, the Federal Trade Commission and 48 states and districts have sued Facebook, accusing it of abusing its market power. A look at what's next for the social media giant. May not fit under the Christmas tree. We'll tell you about Samsung's new 110 inch TV that would have to go uh, to somebody who's definitely on Santa's nice list. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fire causes problems for hotel guests on the north side overnight. We'll have details on what happened. And more details on a possible breakup of Facebook as the company faces more antitrust lawsuits. Well, up to your 80 yesterday and then back down to the 40s this morning. I mean, wild swings in temperature continue, but Justin said that is about to come to a screeching halt. We'll have to see what's next. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, December 10th. Thanks for joining us. He's over there grinning right now like, ooh, we'll get away to <laughs> hear this. Right, Justin? Uh, it, it, well, it's exciting. We always love a little bit of action here in the, in the Weather Center. I know, Mark, you're not a fan of the warmer weather, but... It has been nice the last couple of days. We've seen uh, quite a bit of sun. There will be some changes tonight, and we'll certainly get some changes going into tomorrow. So right now, we're looking at 43 degrees. It is chilly out there. Northwesterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. That's going to provide for a little bit of a wind chill, and we should be up around 75, 76 a little bit later this afternoon with uh, some increasing clouds as we get later into today. Let's check in on the temperatures around the area. We've got 48 Canyon Lake, 43 New Braunfels, 38 Rio Medina. Uh, this, on average, is a little bit warmer than we, what we've seen last couple mornings. And certainly tomorrow morning will be warmer as we get some added moisture in here. Here's what the forecast looks like today. 52 by 9 o'clock, 68 noontime. We're up around 77 for that high temperature. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour kicking in. Then we got our rain chances tomorrow morning. We've upped the rain chances just a little bit. And then we'll see uh, a pretty nice weekend. So we're going to talk all about that coming up here in just a few minutes. But I think we've got a couple issues out on the roads. Let's check in with Nick. Yeah, still dealing with those stalled vehicles there, Justin. But other than that, no accidents right now to report. No construction here in the inner city. Things look good all around. Got a lot of green on the screen. Let's just take a look at uh, some drive times. But here, these stalled vehicles northbound and southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. Probably going to be dealing with them all morning. Just please be careful when you are heading southbound on 281, especially at Hildebrand due to that stalled vehicle. 151 eastbound, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. Your 90 eastbound from 1604 all the way to 35. 12 minutes looks good there. Let's go straight to Trans Guide right now. 1604 at Hausman. That's looking good there on the northwest side. Flowing very smooth. And 281 at the quarry. That, that looks good as well. Just remember everyone, wear that seatbelt and get to work safely. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a fire is to blame for a late night wake up call for people staying at the Stay Bridge Suites on the north side. It happened just before midnight in the 800 block of North Loop 1604. Fire officials say it was caused by a microwave on the fourth floor. And even though it was knocked out quickly by the hotel's sprinkler system, water ended up making it all the way down to the lobby. All guests then had to evacuate. Many were moved to a nearby sister hotel. No one was hurt. It is a project that has been years in the making. A new land bridge at Harburger Park on the north side will open to the public tomorrow. Samuel King joins us now in the studio to tell us more. And Samuel, what makes this project so unique? Well, Stephanie and Mark, usually when you think of bridges, we're talking about carrying people or cars. But this bridge is different because it's designed to carry animals as well across busy Wurzbach Parkway. Now, crews have been hard at work this week getting this area ready to open. The bridge is 150 feet wide and rises 25 feet over Wurzbach Parkway. Landscaping includes native trees and plants. And the land bridge will also feature an elevated walkway that should be completed later this month. Now, the $23 million project was paid for for proceeds from the 2017 bond, as well as private fundraising. It was first envisioned even before Phil Hardberger Park opened. The former mayor says that's because road construction split the park in two. Right through the middle of it, they were building at that time Wurzbach Parkway. So we knew from day one we were going to have to somehow or another join the two halves of the park. 
Now people can cross to the other side of the park without going to the other end as well. And as for the reason it's so wide, that's also so animals know how to cross as well. Now the land bridge is set to open to the public tomorrow afternoon after one o'clock. Coming up at six, we'll have more on why officials say the bridge will make things safer not only for the animals, but also for people driving below on Warsbach Parkway. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Today marks an important deadline for certain bars right here in Bear County. An order from Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says bars that only serve drinks will have to close by 11 tonight and remain closed until further notice. Those businesses have only been open for a little more than a month. Those who don't wish to close would need to become classified as a restaurant and add food to the menu, which is what some bar owners say they can't afford. The Food and Drug Administration is set to discuss its review of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine today. It comes in two doses. Metro Health says the first dose offers about 87% protection. About three weeks later, a second dose is given and that protection rate rises to about 95%. If approved, it could be in Bear County by next week and would be given to health care workers first. And tonight's town hall will be centered around the vaccine. Our ECs Romero will be taking your questions to the panel of experts from Metro Health and other agencies. You can still send in your questions right now on our website. The town hall starts tonight at 7 p.m. on KSAP.com. Right now to six minutes past five. Facebook under fire facing lawsuits from the federal government and dozens of states who claim the company is an illegal monopoly. They are demanding Facebook sell Instagram and WhatsApp. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. This morning, the stage is set for a possible breakup of Facebook. The social media giant is facing two major antitrust lawsuits calling for the company to sell off Instagram and WhatsApp. Billions were thrown at smaller companies in an effort to get them to sell. The two most glaring examples of this unlawful scheme were Instagram and WhatsApp. The U.S. government accuses Facebook of anti-competitive practices, claiming the company illegally acquired potential competitors in a, quote, predatory manner. In a separate lawsuit, 48 states' attorneys general accused the company of stifling competition to protect its monopoly power. You know, Facebook has argued for a while that they face a number of competitors out there, whether it's TikTok or Twitter. But the reality is it's sort of in a league of its own. Facebook itself is massive. The most likely outcome of this lawsuit is a settlement of some sort. Facebook purchased Instagram in 2012 for $1 billion and then WhatsApp for $19 billion two years later. The FTC signed off on both acquisitions. Facebook is vowing to fight any legal challenges, saying antitrust laws exist to protect consumers and promote innovation, not to punish successful businesses. CEO Mark Zuckerberg saying this to Congress earlier this year. When Amazon bought Whole Foods, they could compete against Kroger's and Walmart. When Facebook bought WhatsApp, we can compete against telcos who used to charge 10 cents a text message, but not anymore. Now people can watch video, get groceries delivered, and send private messages for free. That's competition. Experts say the case against Facebook is strong. Legal filings include an email from Mark Zuckerberg in 2008, in which he allegedly said, quote, better to buy than to compete. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 508 and 43 degrees for now. Glad you're with us. Another choice for package delivery could soon be coming as Uber expands its newest service. Also next, could the COVID-19 crisis lead to a boost in college enrollment? Outside with live cam down to 43 degrees right now at San Antonio International Airport. Justin Horn's Thursday forecast coming up and uh, we'll take a look ahead also to the upcoming weekend. Just about 512, the COVID-19 pandemic has cost millions of Americans their jobs. But could the grim financial situation lead to more college admissions? Our Eric Hernandez has the answer. The coronavirus has turned the U.S. economy upside down, but a recent analysis shows a dire financial environment could prompt a boost in college enrollment. Economists studied college attendance levels during the three years before and the three years after the Great Recession of 2008 and found part-time enrollment increased after the recession, especially for students seeking a one-year certificate program. Attendance also increased among minority students and in states with rising unemployment. If you're considering college enrollment, see if you're eligible for financial aid. You may be if your situation has changed due to COVID-19. 
Also, check if the school you're applying to offers coronavirus emergency relief funds. Some do, and it's a good idea to compare the cost of private versus public schools. Statistics show unemployment rates right now during the COVID-19 downturn are lower among workers with higher levels of education. Researchers say the study findings suggest parents and families facing unemployment may accept the cost of education, viewing it as one path to new opportunity. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 513, 43 degrees. And still ahead, more details on Uber upgrading its package delivery service to thousands of locations. And here's something for your Christmas list, but night might not fit under the tree. We'll tell you about Samsung's 100-inch TV. Thanks, Steph. <laughs> no problem, Mark. I just, got this. Just ahead. <laughs> Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. If you've been taking COPD sitting day. down, it's time to make a stand. Start a new day and with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems you're vision changes or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. 516 Uber expanding its package delivery system. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Uber's beefed up package delivery service. Uber Connect is now available in more than 2,400 new locations, just in time to send holiday gifts amid this pandemic. The service is also offering new features like same day contact free delivery. A massive Samsung television is hitting the market. It's being called the wall and it's 110 inches. For now, Samsung isn't revealing the price, but it's expected to cost more than $100,000. The TV is to be sold in Korea before going global next year. FAO Swartz has teamed up with Airbnb to let one family sleep over and get the store all to themselves. The winning family will be chosen through an online lottery. The store was featured in the movie Big, among other films. But will it have that piano? Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's way more than I thought, so yeah. I'm not going to hold you to that. Thank you, Mark. It's You're welcome. A little expensive. My pleasure, Stephanie. <laughs> Nick, everything okay over there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give some of the Dorito crumbs off my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got a lot of green on the screen here. Things are looking good. Just dealing with those two stalled vehicles on northbound and southbound Hildebrand Avenue. Please be careful. There's one there on the southbound lanes that's right after that wind there. That's pretty dangerous. So um, be careful when you're heading in that direction. 37 in Jones right now looks good. I-10 and West Avenue looking even better. Let's see. Here's 281 in Hildebrand. There's that wind right there. And got to watch your speed on that curb because that vehicle's there on the left-hand shoulder. Could be dangerous if you lose control. Thank you, Nick. So there's the Loch Ness Monster. There is Bigfoot and there are blue bonnets. Yeah, blue. In December. Right, blue, blue bonnets. You know, really? 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this is a good one. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, it is a beautiful shot. Uh, and we've got blue bonnets in December. It, it's been warm. It's been kind of a weird year. Uh, yeah, so th there it is. Uh, we appreciate the shot that was sent in by Tammy, by the way. Uh, we're going to show some more shots from our KSAT Connect a little bit later this morning. Uh, it, it was warm yesterday, up to 80 degrees, 79 in Kerrville, 75 Rock Springs. You know, with that being said, I've noticed a lot of the red oak trees really starting to show their colors right now. So a little bit of everything, we're getting all the seasons kind of shoved into to one here. But I, I do think we're going to get some cooler weather as we get into the weekend, and certainly as we get into next week. 43 degrees currently. We've got clear skies northwesterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. Holotus down at 39, same at Stinson. Randolph is at 40, Kerrville down to freezing yet again. They've been right around that mark, seems like last couple mornings. And that's where we'll start again. Jacket weather with uh, temperatures in 30s and 40s for most of us this morning. There is a little bit of a wind chill, feels like it's 40 here in town. Feels like it's in the 30s here around Hondo 31. Your current feels like number 
Uh, we'll see dew points steadily increase today. And as you know, once we get a higher dew point, that means some warmer overnight lows. That's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow morning. So we will not see a repeat as we start Friday. And in fact, we'll get some rain and cloud cover. So it'll be quite a bit different uh, for your Friday morning commute. Dew points eventually make it into the 60s overnight tonight. Here's what we're waiting on. This is the area of low pressure. We've been talking about this most of the week. It's been sitting out there over California. Finally on the move, it's producing some showers there across parts of Arizona and New Mexico. So much needed rain there too. Uh, you know, it's not just us that's in drought. It's most of the western half of the country. So this is, this is good to see. And it, it will bring us a little bit of rain, hopefully, uh, as it moves in our direction. It will take more of a northerly track. So we're not getting uh, its full force here. But we are going to get... Uh, some isolated showers uh, out of it, maybe even some scattered activity. So by six o'clock today, we're still looking at mostly clear skies, but clouds will increase pretty quickly overnight. And by midnight, we're starting to see some showers out west, places like Del Rio and Rock Springs. You could start to see a little bit of activity. And then by seven o'clock, rain seems like a pretty good bet at this point. We're going to go with a, about a 40% chance. Not only will we see some showers, uh, we could also see some drizzle. So we're pretty confident that it will be damp. We're just not expecting huge accumulations here maybe on the order of a tenth of an inch, maybe up to a quarter of an inch for some of us. And then by midday, the rain clears out and we'll be looking at a pretty decent weekend, I think. Forecast for the rest of today, 57 degrees, 10 o'clock noontime. We're up around 68. I think we top out mid to upper 70s today, so a little bit cooler than yesterday. And tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, mainly in the morning. And then a little cooler Saturday, 68. Sunday, 65. There could be a couple showers east of San Antonio, maybe a little bit of added cloud cover. It will also turn breezy as another front works through and then cooler on Monday, 58, 65 on Tuesday. And yet another front Tuesday into Wednesday. I, wow. I turned the AC on 72 yesterday just in case because I knew it was going to warm up right. and I was home all day. Sure. It never kicked on, never not in the house, but I know it did get warm up outside. It did. It was mm. it, it was toasty yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon for sure. Yeah, outside. Yeah. My house is old and it captures the cold. It captures the so cold. So it never left my <laughs> house <laughs> from the morning. <laughs> so shorts outside, park is inside. Exactly. Got I it. put my jacket on to be inside my house. There you go. 522, 43 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, Nicolas Cage is hosting a new docuseries on the history of swear words, plus a new role for Marvel, Marvel and Jurassic World actor Chris Pratt. Pick three numbers, 205 Fireball 4. Your daily four numbers, 0188 Fireball 3. Cash 5134102025. And Lotto, Texas, uh, 20, 34, 39, 43, 51, 54. And your Powerball number is 11, 14, 31, 47, 48, Powerball 4, Power Play 3. Good luck. There's a lot we can't say about a famous actor's next project. <laughs> it's not that we don't know, we're just not allowed. No. CNN's David Daniel explains in our Hollywood Minute. I mean, we take the negative and turn it into a positive. History class was and never like this. Oscar-winning actor Nicolas Cage is set to host a new Netflix docuseries titled History of Swear Words. He'll reportedly be joined by linguists, scientists, and celebrity guests, and it's likely we'll all learn something, even if we can't repeat it in polite company. The series debuts January 5th. He's a big, gregarious goofball. Chris Pratt has signed on to the indie comedy The Black Belt, a coming-of-age story about a shy teenage boy trying to find his way through karate. Pratt is set to play the boy's unorthodox uncle who offers him guidance. The actor will also produce the film through his Indivisible Productions label. Mom's gone. It's just you and me. Trying to make a better way when the day's finished. You don't have to do this on your own. The inspirational true story of college football player Ray Ray McElrath Bay is now a movie, Safety. Jay Reeves plays the redshirt freshman who let his little brother live secretly in his Clemson dorm room so the boy wouldn't have to go to foster care. Safety debuts Friday on Disney+. Plus. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, another good one on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, help me remember that it's Disney+, Plus out of yeah. all those other options. Yeah, I'm good. I was like, okay, we got The Mandalorian, we got that. A lot of options. 526, 43 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour as millions of Americans struggle financially, an update on what lawmakers are doing to find a deal on a COVID relief proposal. Hey, 2020 keeps causing more problems why consumers may now have to deal with a looming toy shortage this holiday season. Plus, it could soon cost you more 
to be happy. More details on price changes that could soon be coming to McDonald's Happy Meals. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, December 10th. Thanks for joining us. It is that time of year where we're on alert for any shred of mountain cedar in our pollen count. What's the latest, Justin? Still not. Still not. This is this is exciting news. Uh, with uh, turn on the mic first. Uh, mountain cedar staying basically out of the forecast for now. We do think it will increase as we get later into December, especially the last couple weeks of December. That's when we expect. Uh, mountain cedar starts to jump up, but right now it's still just mold. That's all we got 240 and it's in the low category and looking at the weather headlines. We've got another warm day headed our way today. Mostly sunny skies. We may see some clouds as we get uh, later into the afternoon and then more clouds. Certainly as we go into tonight, increase in moisture and then we think there will be a damp morning commute on Friday with a, a decent chance for some showers, especially in the morning time. Maybe some drizzle too. If you're heading off to school this morning, grab a coat. There is a little bit of a wind chill out there, 42 degrees right now. Then we'll be up around 77 this afternoon and mostly sunny. Uh, the morning commute looks good this morning. Again, it may change a little bit tomorrow, and Nick always has the latest for us. So let's check in with him now and uh, see how things are looking. Ah, thanks, Justin. Right now, things are looking really good. A lot of green on the screen here. Nothing going on in the city right now. Today's the day you can leave on time or a little bit late if you want because things look good. All right, just dealing with stalled vehicles northbound and southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. We have tra some trans guide footage I'm going to show you right now. It's right there coming southbound on that wind. Um, it's going to be there, but let me show you these drive times first. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown. You got a 13 minute ride. You're 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown. 12 minutes. Really good times there. All right, here's that 281 in Hildebrand shot right there. These cars coming down that curve. With, uh, just be careful. You're going southbound. Look out for that stalled vehicle on the left shoulder. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, sir. Republican and Democratic lawmakers trying to come to a deal on a coronavirus relief package. But for now, the proposal doesn't include stimulus payments like the one sent to millions of Americans earlier this year. CNN's John Lawrence has more details. There's still a stalemate on a stimulus package, and the clock is ticking. People's eyes are fixed on Congress. They need the House and the Senate to stop chasing our tails and make a law. A bipartisan group of lawmakers has proposed a deal that includes giving the unemployed $300 more a week for 16 weeks, $300 billion in aid for small businesses, and a continued pause on federal student loan payments through the end of April. The plan doesn't include stimulus checks. We need a large, bold program to stimulate the economy, help people out of the conditions they're in, but keep the economy going for a long period of time. Congress is trying to get a bill passed soon because aid programs that were approved in March, including jobless assistant measures and eviction protections, expire before the end of the year. We're not going home until we do get one. How can you, how can you face the people back home that have lost their unemployment check, that have lost their food assistance, they've lost their shelter? All the necessities of life that we take for granted. Sticking points include state and local aid and liability protection for employers. This need not be rocket science. But we can't do a thing unless the Democrats decide they actually want to make a law. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A SpaceX taste test launch ended in a fiery landing and cr explosion after two scrubbed attempts. SpaceX successfully launched the experimental rocket last night in Boca Chica near South Padre Island. The craft called Starship went up eight miles out over the Gulf, returned to Earth, and then right at touchdown exploded in a fireball. That might seem catastrophic for a craft that's hoped to transport humans to Mars but someday, but SpaceX founder Elon Musk says he knew the highly experimental flight only stood a one in three chance of landing unscathed. Musk has always maintained failure is a necessary part of the process. And the White House is changing the nation's environmental regulations in the last days of the President Trump presidency. It has finalized a rule that could prevent the Environmental Protection Agency from passing stronger measures to fight air pollution and climate change. The rule would require a cost and benefit analysis of any future change under the Clean Air Act. The new rule would also prevent scientists from presenting secondary benefits of any proposed policy change. EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler says a new rule will ensure consistency when analyzing costs and benefits of new policies. Environmental groups are calling on President-elect Joe Biden to reverse the new rules when he takes office. 534, 43 degrees. And still ahead with the holiday shopping season in full swing, consumers now 
have another issue to deal with, a looming toy shortage. We're going to tell you which toys and gadgets that are in short supply. And next, a closer look at a timeline of when we can expect the COVID-19 vaccine to be available here in South Texas. And taking a look with live cam outside, it is 43 degrees for now, and uh, we have a little bit of everything for you. If you like the cold, you can wear your jacket now. If you like the sun, it will warm up later today, and there will be more changes ahead. We're going to check in with Justin after the break. 537, welcome back to GMSA. A potential vaccine for the coronavirus could be approved as early as today by U.S. health officials. RJ Marcus breaks down the timeline of when we will get the vaccine in Texas and who will be first in line to get it. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has said once a potential vaccine is federally approved, then the state should get its first shipment soon. He is targeting this upcoming Monday as the day that Texas should start receiving doses. Abbott expects Texas to get up to 1.4 million doses of the vaccine to start, with a second shipment likely in January. The Pfizer vaccine is expected to be approved first, followed by a separate vaccine developed by Moderna. Moderna is scheduled to meet with federal officials on December 17th to get final approval. That will increase the supply, but it is still very limited. The state has already laid out plans for who will get the vaccine first. It will go to healthcare workers that have been separated into tiers. The first tier includes any hospital staff working working directly with patients who are positive or at high risk for COVID-19. Long-term care staff working at nursing homes and assisted living facilities are in this tier as well. EMS providers and home health care workers who have direct contact with vulnerable and high-risk patients are also in tier one. Custodial staff is also included. There is a second tier if there is enough of the first supply remaining. This tier includes staff in outpatient care offices who interact with symptomatic patients and direct care staff in freestanding emergency medical facilities and urgent care clinics. Pharmacy and public health staff who test for COVID or give the vaccine are in the second tier, along with people who provide mortuary or death services to those that have passed away from COVID related problems. And finally, school nurses are the last group of the second tier. Governor Abbott says the general public will not have a chance to get the vaccine until next spring at the earliest. We know you have a lot of questions, so check out ksat.com for the latest information, including our article titled Your Questions Answered about the COVID-19 vaccine in Texas. And don't forget, ECS Romero is hosting a live stream with experts from Metro Health to give you the most up-to-date information about vaccines here at home. That starts tonight at 7. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Food Bank is used to responding to natural disasters that only require days or weeks of response. But nine months into the pandemic, food bank staff and volunteers are fighting exhaustion. Food banks nationwide remain in overdrive. The Associated Press analyzed data from 181 food banks in Feeding America's National Network. It found that food distribution rose by an average of almost 49% in the two quarters of 2020 after the start of the pandemic. San Antonio Food Bank has seen a 30% increase in demand. They are keeping up for now by making cuts where they can. The best way we can do it is just spread it a little thinner, ration the inventory that we have to try to make sure no one goes away empty handed and no one goes hungry. Listen to this stat. Before the pandemic, the food bank was feeding 60,000 people a week. They now feed 120,000 people a week. To find out how you can help, head to ksat.com and click on this story. And time now, it's 541 and 43 degrees for now. Up next, why McDonald's Happy Meals could be getting a little bit more expensive. And welcome back. It is 543. So checkout time came a lot earlier than expected for guests at a Northside hotel. A small fire led to a big flooding problem at the Staybridge Suites on Loop 1604 near Stone Oak Parkway. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, how did this all happen? Well, good morning, Stephanie. Sounds like a big mess, but uh, this started according to what we were told with a small fire in a microwave oven led to flooding that came from one of the rooms all the way down into the lobby. Right now things are quiet, but we can still see some emergency lights. It appears emergency lights flashing inside the building. A lot of the guests have been moved out. Let me give you a look at the video from how things looked very late last night. This started about 1145. Fire department got here and they said that they did find water coming all the way down into the lobby of the hotel. They helped, helped the hotel to uh, mop up some of that water. The hotel evacuated the guests 
and sent a lot of them to a sister property. But it does sound like they've got a mess here to clean up. Uh, again, this started with a small fire, just a small fire in a microwave. And then this is the result of the fire department says the result of the sprinkler system, which then I guess did its job, but did its job too well and led to the flooding problem here at the uh, hotel. Now we do see a couple of lights on in some of the upper rooms. I don't know if any of the guests were able to remain in those rooms or not, but we were told that at least some of the guests were evacuated and sent to another property. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your morning consumer headlines, as it does every year, the Pantone Color Institute is announcing its colors of the year for 2021. It appears they're trying to set a new mood for the coming year, choosing for the first time a calming neutral and ultimate gray, along with a vibrant and sunshine filled yellow called illuminating. The company says it's a combination that speaks to resilience, optimism, and positivity that we really need right now. Pantone's colors of the year reflects trends in fashion fashion, beauty, design, and home decor. It's the second time the company has chosen two different colors. So gray is in for next year? Yeah, you're already ahead of the game. Accidentally trending. <laughs> the pandemic has kept millions of people stuck at home this year, and a lot of them decided to do some remodeling. And Home Depot is responding to that trend by expanding its line of decor. New categories in the company's website include furniture, linens, and small kitchen appliances. You can even find towels and wine glasses. That's smart. Home improvement giant has always had home decor options, but the CEO Ted Decker says recently they launched HD Home, an expansion of its catalog of items. Comes as Home Depot and rival Lowe's both see record growth in online sales. McDonald's Happy Meals could be getting a bit less happy because they may be getting a bit more expensive. The fast food chain is scrapping a decades old deal with its franchises, subsidi subsidizing the price of Happy Meal toys. So starting in 2021, McDonald's will stop issuing the roughly $300 monthly contribution to its U.S. restaurants. The contribution is called the Happy Meal Rent and Service Fee. So franchises will be able to increase the price of a Happy Meal by 20 cents to offset the difference. Now, McDonald's said it's finding ways to provide other subsidies. Now to the holiday shopping season and a looming toy shortage. It's not just the latest toys and gadgets that might be in short supply. Even some of the more traditional items are hard to find. ABC's Andrea Fujii explains why. This morning, Santa and his elves are working overtime. For Christmas, I want is a quad and Hot Wheels, please. I'm on a doggy and a new Barbie. I really, really want an electric scooter. But the coronavirus could cause a major toy shortage this Christmas. Playstations and Xboxes are sold out almost everywhere. And nostalgic toys like puzzles, board games, and even Rubik's Cubes are hard to find. There is a shortage and we are having a little bit of trouble getting the things that we want to get. The reason? The pandemic. Toy sales overall are up nearly 20% this year. It all started months ago when families were forced to stay inside and parents bought toys to keep kids occupied. That led to unexpected demand and delays for manufacturers. Crafts are so, so popular right now. The kids are home. They're in front of their screens a lot. And what we want is to get them away from it. And now, new problems with shipping. The Port of Los Angeles facing backlogs because of the pandemic. With fewer trucks and low staffing levels, many workers need overtime to empty those cargo containers. We have about 20 vessels in port, which is a little bit higher than normal, and 11 ships that are just outside waiting to enter. Many cargo ships come from Asia, where they're also backlogged. Some ports reported delays up to three weeks. But shopping experts say there is hope. You don't always have to rely on shipping. If they are available, uh, they'll be available through the normal retailers. You can still go to Target. You can still go to Walmart. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Well, and I've got to think that uh, some of these uh, in-demand items like PS5s, we're not on the slow boat from China. I mean, those, they're flying those in as soon as they come out of the factory. I guess maybe just a lot of people, the demand. It's got to be demand. People want them, yeah. yeah. 549 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Officer Nick Solis. How are things looking now, especially with that stalled vehicle that was out there earlier? They're looking, they're still looking good.
got one accident, not on the major highway. It's going to be at Ingram and Petrenko Road here. Uh, two vehicle accident. Now that area does get a little stalled up anyways right there, especially at Petrenko and Calabria. So just be careful if you're heading this way. Look out for this accident. Still dealing with these stalled vehicles northbound and southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. And here it is right here. There's that uh, southbound lane of 281 on that left shoulder. There's a vehicle right there. Please uh, be careful when heading that direction. 35 and 410 looking good. We got 1604 at Bandera on the northwest side looking great. And 410 at 151. Traffic's definitely picking up, but still flowing smooth. Thank you, Nick. As uh, Justin joins us now, sounds like we could end the week weather-wise on a whole different note. Yeah, Nick's, Nick's kind of having a quiet morning this morning. Tomorrow may be a little bit different story. We're, we're thinking that there could be some wet roads tomorrow morning for the Friday morning commute. Right now, still nice. Temperature's a little chilly. We're at 43 degrees at the airport. Seeing some 30s on the map now, too. Stinson, 39. Calm, 40. Kelly, 40. Randolph. And there's just enough breeze out there to give us a little bit of a wind chill. Down the freezing now, Tarpley and Kerrville. This map looks almost exactly the same as what we've seen last couple of mornings. So a very similar start. 45 Bernie Stage, 38 Hondo, 39 cents and 43 right now in New Braunfels. Uh, still in the low 50s out near Del Rio, 51 Kennedy, 44 Gonzalez. Uh, again, a little bit of a wind chill, not a huge issue this morning. There's uh, just a little bit of a breeze out there. Dew points are really low. Air is really dry. That's why we continue to see these close to 40 degree temperature swings. That changes today. Let's show you those changes because by say 5.30 p.m. we're starting to see a southeasterly breeze and that's starting to up that dew point. This is still in comfortable range, low 50s. But by tonight you will notice the humidity and it will also result in cloud cover. It will also be the reason we have some chances for rain. As this moisture surges in, dew points in the 60s potentially by tomorrow morning, we've got a storm system that, are, that will interact with this moisture. And there you go, we get uh, some showers on the map. As we look across the country, uh, it is cold, yes, but nothing that jumps off the page here. I mean, you would typically expect it to be in the 30s up north, 31 Omaha, 35 Minneapolis, 23 Casper. There's nothing that's bitterly cold, and we're not expecting any big cold air masses to slip down into Texas. Interestingly enough, though, some of the northern states, even this morning and into tomorrow, have the potential to see the aurora borealis, which is pretty cool. So the northern lights, we won't see it down here in Texas, but some of the northern states will, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're watching this storm system down here across uh, parts of Arizona and California. That'll be moving in tomorrow. And it's already producing some rain now around Phoenix and some of the rain and snow moving towards Albuquerque as well. So here's what our forecast looks like. Uh, quiet today. This is around 6 o'clock, still looking at mostly sunny skies. But those clouds increase tonight. A couple showers possible as early as midnight out near Del Rio and Rock Springs. And then by 7 o'clock, here comes the rain. Some decent downpours, I think. We're not really looking for thunderstorms here. And there's not going to be a ton of rain, but we think the chances are pretty good that it will be uh, somewhat wet tomorrow morning. If we're not seeing showers, we'll probably see some drizzle too. There's enough moisture for that. By midday, the rain's moving east, the clouds clear out. Friday afternoon, Friday evening look pretty good. So does Saturday, and by Sunday, we may start seeing an increase in cloud cover once again. Maximum rainfall potential, it's not very high. Tenth of an inch at most, I'd say here around San Antonio, some of our eastern counties could pick up close to a quarter of an inch with this uh, next system. Rest of today, up around 77 for a high, mostly sunny. Southeasterly winds will kick in later today, 5 to 10. Extended forecast will go 74 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, mainly early. 60s over the weekend. Sunday, we'll get another front coming through, so it'll cool down, especially late in the day. It'll turn breezy in the Mondays, a uh, much cooler day. 58 will start off at 34. It's another potential freeze around the area Monday morning. Oh, back from cool to downright cold mornings next week. Pretty chilly, but still nothing that... You know, that, that big cold front where it gets really chilly, it's not, not in the forecast. Okay, but definitely jacket weather. Yes. <laughs> right now it's 553, 43 degrees. Let's, Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. That's right. We have pick 3205, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 0188, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 13, 14, 20, 25, Lotto Texas 20, 34, 39, 43, 51, 54, and Powerball 11, 14, 31, 47, 48, Powerball 4, Power Play Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a historic day ahead. The FDA panel gearing up for that critical coronavirus vaccine meeting, deciding whether or not to give the green light to the potentially life-saving vaccines 
for Americans. Millions of doses are ready to be shipped as soon as the FDA grants emergency use authorization. So what does the timeline look like? And when could you get it? We're going to answer those questions as the country is seeing record high numbers of deaths, cases, and hospitalizations. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Just a friendly reminder on this Thursday morning, our KSAC community partners are still stuffing stockings for SAU. Can help spread a little holiday cheer by donating toys, arts and crafts, and even healthy snacks. The Stuff a Stocking Drive runs through the 18th. More information right now at KSACcommunity.com. Christmas trees are a big part of this time of year, but how and when do they become such a staple? Just to have a look at the origin, one of the most popular holiday traditions around. And Transcribe, there's 410 at Highway 151. Officer Nick Solis will have an update on traffic coming up at the top of the hour. And Justin's forecast takes a bit of a turn going into tomorrow. Details ahead. Some travelers finding themselves with new living arrangements this morning after a fire broke out at a North San Antonio hotel. But firefighters say the damage did not come from flames, but from the sprinklers. A big FDA meeting today could grant emergency approval for a COVID vaccine in the U.S. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cool start to your day at 42 degrees. Expecting a little bit of a warm up today, kind of like yesterday, but Justin says things will change. So we're going to check in with him right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Thursday, December 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, we made it to Thursday. Not bad. Not bad of a week. Yeah. Not bad at all. And we're dry this morning and on the cool side, but everything changes by this time tomorrow, right, Justin? Yeah, this is well, this is the fun time of year when you get to use the uh, AC in the afternoon. You got to use a heater in the morning. You just kind of mix it up every day. Uh, <laughs> and, and everything does change tomorrow because we'll get some rain chances. Uh, temperatures will be quite a bit warmer overnight tonight. High temperatures yesterday back up to 80 degrees. Uh, it was toasty. In fact, New Braunfels got up to 83, 80 in Hondo. Not quite records, but well above average for sure. Today, temperatures probably mid to upper 70s, so not as warm. And we're starting off not as cold. 45 Bernie stage, 39 Holotus, 42 at the airport, 40 at Randolph, 46 Canyon Lake. We are still pretty chilly up around Kerrville, 31 degrees there. Forecast. Uh, calls for 68 by noontime. You will start to notice a little bit more cloud cover late in the day, a little bit more humidity too, and then our rain chances kick in early tomorrow morning. Decent chance for some rain. We'll talk about how much we can expect and when it ends. It's coming up here in just a few minutes, but uh, we got to get over to Nick now. And just like yesterday, I'm seeing lots of green on it, Matt. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Yeah, a lot of green. God, we got one accident, Justin, but it's okay. not affecting the major highways. That one's going to be here, Petrenko and Ingram Road. But first, I wanted to remind you what Samuel King reported yesterday. We got a road closure here. Martin Luther King Drive from Lone Oak Street to West Hind Road closed from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. today due to uh, the virtual preparing for their virtual MLK parade here next month. So just a reminder there, portion of Martin Luther King Drive will be closed down for eight hours today. All right, this accident here, Ingram and Petrenko Road, looks like it just cleared up. Good news. Have this stalled vehicles northbound and southbound at Hildebrand Avenue still. Very dangerous there. It's coming from that southbound curve, so just be careful when you're heading in that direction. All right, 410-151. Looks really good. Flowing smoothly. Like the way it looks there, and we'll do one more here. What do we got? Eh, it's going to stay at 410 and 151. It's all good. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a fire caused guests at a San Antonio hotel to evacuate overnight. Fire crews responded to the call at the Stabert Suites off 1604 near Highway 281 just before midnight. They say a microwave on a fourth floor room caught fire. The fire set off sprinklers, which caused significant water damage. Firefighters say the water made it all the way down to the lobby. Hotel evacuated the guests and sent them to nearby hotels while the rooms are being repaired. San Antonio police are looking for a driver involved in a hit and run. Police say it happened around 1030 last night at the intersection of Southeast Military and Goliad. They say a woman was walking across the street when a driver hit her with a car. That driver then ran away. The woman was taken to a hospital and police say she is expected to be OK. San Antonio police need your help solving a capital murder case. It's about a year old now. In December of last year, SAPD says 19 year old Aiden Hoffman was shot at the Echo Apartments in the 13,000 block of O'Connor Road. After he was shot, police say Hoffman was able to drive away but die from his injuries at a nearby Whataburger. If you have any information on who was involved, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. 
And if you drive along Wurzbach Parkway, you have probably seen the construction project going on overhead. Crews are putting the finishing touches on the new land bridge over the parkway. Our Samuel King joins us live in studio. Samuel, this project opens to the public pretty soon. Yeah, as soon as tomorrow afternoon. In fact, it will finally link the two sections of Phil Hardberger Park. Uh, excuse me, anyway. So you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to put it on there, but the project was planned even before the park opened in 2010. That's because of construction of Wurzbach Parkway meant the park was basically split into two. So officials led by former Mayor Phil Hartberger came up with the idea of a land bridge, something unique in this area. Park is designed, the bridge is designed to be part of the park itself, be wide enough to allow animals to cross. Not just people, it will also solve a bit of a safety issue. Animals sometimes want a venture onto Forsbark Parkway looking for food and water. Even though you do put uh, barriers, they'll get across or start to get across. Right now it's six lanes. TxDOT says it'll eventually be eight lanes. And uh, so we had some accidents. Now, construction crews report that some animals have already started to figure out how to cross. And the bridge's opening tomorrow will mean people can also cross to the other side of the park using the trails and such without having to go all the way to the other end. It may not look all that neat even when it opens, but that's part of the design. The native landscaping and trees will continue to grow, changing the look of the land bridge over the years. Now, a new skyway at the park should also be completed by the end of the year, and a $23 million project was paid for with money from the 2017 bond, as well as the Phil Hardberger Park Conservancy. Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Local health officials reporting 730 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is still just above 1,000 cases each day. No new viruses virus-related deaths were reported yesterday. City officials report that 663 patients are currently in the hospital due to the virus. 226 are in the ICU and 119 are on ventilators. Some bars across Bear County will close tonight for the foreseeable future. An order from Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says bars that only serve drinks have to close tonight at 11 and remain closed until further notice. Those businesses have only been open for a little more than a month. Those who don't wish to close will need to become classified as a restaurant by adding food to their menu, which some bar owners we talk to say they cannot afford. The Food and Drug Administration will meet today to have a public hearing on a COVID-19 vaccine. FDA could allow Pfizer's vaccine be distributed and prompt the first round of immunizations in upcoming days. Comes on the heels of one of the deadliest days in American history due to the virus. ABC's Alex Perche has more. Good morning. Yeah, a vaccine can't come soon enough. Yesterday, COVID deaths made it the third deadliest day in U.S. history, surpassing the 9-11 attacks. This morning, the Pfizer vaccine with its last major hurdle in the U.S. The FDA Advisory Committee meeting is today. They'll discuss their vaccine findings and vote on emergency authorization. There's much more to learn here. We're operating under very difficult circumstances, but I think under the conditions, uh, we should feel good about where we are right now. When the FDA does sign off, 2.9 million doses will be sent out across the country within 24 hours. The U.S. had its deadliest day of the pandemic yesterday, more than 3,000 deaths. People still don't think this is a big deal. They think it's kind of fake news. The L.A. County we Health Director breaking down in tears over the county's growing death toll. Sorry, oh, over 8,000 people who were beloved members of their families are not coming back. Hospitalizations nationwide now topping 104,000, with dire staffing shortages now hitting, including in Kansas, where one hospital has 152 frontline workers out with COVID. And we chemically coded a patient when I walked on the unit. We intubated a patient emergently 10 minutes after that. Even with the vaccine, the latest report from the COVID task force is painting a grim picture. It says a vaccine will not reduce virus spread, hospitalizations or fatalities until next spring. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Customs and Border Patrol agents seized 100,000 counterfeit N95 surgical masks in El Paso. 
So the N95 knockoffs were intended for hospital workers on the East Coast. The masks were branded 3M, but with help from that company, agents were able to determine they were fake. The retail value of the shipment was more than $600,000. U.S. Customs says they will continue to investigate, arrest, and prosecute smugglers and counterfeiters. Wow. Okay. The Food and Drug Administration has granted emergency use authorization to the first non-prescription over-the-counter COVID-19 test kit. The FDA says anyone over the age of 18 can buy one and swab their nose at home. Positive or invalid results delivered by phone or through a health care provider. Users will be notified by email or through an online portal if results are negative. These kits are now available at Walmart and Sam's Club stores. Back here at home, the San Antonio Food Bank says they have seen a 30% increase in need during the pandemic. The food bank says they are used to responding to natural disasters like flooding and hurricanes, but nine months into a pandemic, the staff and volunteers are feeling exhaustion. They are keeping up with demand for now, but are asking for help from anyone who can help. To find out how you can help, head to KSAT.com and click on this story. About 10 minutes past the hour, 42 degrees. A science expedition off the coast of Baja, California, led a team of researchers to an exciting new theory. We're going to see why they believe this, this, this whale is a brand new species. Researchers looking at historical data to see how the pandemic could impact college enrollment. After the break, we'll look at how college students could increase during this time. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is cold for now, 42 degrees, but there's Something for everyone. We're expecting a warm afternoon and we can talk with Justin after the break about the changes we expect over the weekend. It's about 614 as we all know by now. COVID-19 has cost millions of Americans their jobs. However, some researchers say data shows the financial reality may lead to more college admissions. Erica Hernandez explains. The coronavirus has turned the U.S. economy upside down, but a recent analysis shows a dire financial environment could prompt a boost in college enrollment. Economists studied college attendance levels during the three years before and the three years after the Great Recession of 2008 and found part-time enrollment increased after the recession, especially for students seeking a one-year certificate program. Attendance also increased among minority students and in states with rising unemployment. If you're considering college enrollment, see if you're eligible for financial aid. You may be if your situation has changed due to COVID-19. Also, check if the school you're applying to offers coronavirus emergency relief funds. Some do, and it's a good idea to compare the cost of private versus public schools. Statistics show unemployment rates right now during the COVID-19 downturn are lower among workers with higher levels of education. Researchers say the study findings suggest parents and families facing unemployment may accept the cost of education, viewing it as one path to new opportunity. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's now 615. Let's go ahead and check back with Officer Nick Solis. Uh, the accidents, are they cleared up? Yeah, they cleared up, Steph. Everything's look good there on Ingram and Petrenko. A lot of things looking good right now out there. No heavy pockets of traffic. Maybe a little bit going eastbound on I-10 towards Rigsby, but not bad at all. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're eastbound I-10 from the northwest side of FM 46, that's up there, it's like if you're going to Bernie there, to 1604, you got a 25 minute ride. And if you're continuing eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to downtown, you got a 13 minute ride. Not too bad there. All right, outside right now, I-10 at Woodlawn looks good, both east and westbound lanes. 90 west is Alzamora, it was good. 410 in Northwest Military, looking great. 281 in Hildebrand, still have that stalled vehicle right there in the left shoulder. Be careful when you're coming on that southbound lane of that curve. It's right there in 10 at Hildebrand, looking good as well. Thank you, Nick. Well, many, many years ago, Medina Lake was down to just puddles and it certainly mm -hmm. looks like it's heading that way. Yeah. Well, Medina Lake, you know, d does go up and down quite a bit, mm -hmm. but we, we think back to 2011 through about, I think it's 2016, it, it was really low. And then we saw it fill up and now we're starting to go back down again. We're going to have an article for you today, I believe on uh, KSAT.com with some more information on the lake levels, but we want to give you an update on what we got right now. Medina's at 43% full. It is down 22 feet since last year. Canyon Lake is at 89% full and it generally stays pretty high. But uh, it is down five feet. Choke at 36%, Amistad 64%. Those numbers tell us we are in desperate need of some rainfall. There is some in the forecast, but we're not expecting a lot. And in fact, this just updated and it's lowered the tolls just a little bit, looks like. 
Uh, well, we still think we could get about a tenth of an inch over to a, a quarter of an inch out of, uh, around LaGrange, some of our eastern counties, places like Howitzville, you certainly can see a quarter of an inch. Here in San Antonio, I think probably around a tenth of an inch, and that'll be the case really for, for much of us. This is not going to be a big rain event tomorrow, but at least there is a little bit of rain in the forecast. We'll take whatever we can get, considering we're down nearly 11 inches for the year uh, below the average. 42 degrees right now, clear skies. Northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. The 30s and 40s here across Barrett County. Down to freezing in Kerrville, 32 degrees there. Same story in Tarpley, 46 gain in the Lake 42 in New Braunfels, 53 out near Del Rio. That's one of the warm spots. And then you got the 40s, uh, Gonzales over to LaGrange this morning. Uh, dew points, yeah, they're starting off low, but they're going to climb today. So by the afternoon, we're going to see dew points in the 50s and then eventually 60s by tomorrow morning. So the, the moisture increases very quickly. And that's going to lead to some clouds later today, and then hopefully those rain chances tomorrow. It's going to interact, that moisture is going to interact with this storm system here, which is already producing some rain around Phoenix, uh, close to El Paso, another place that needs some rain for sure. Now the track of this system is to our north. It's not going to move right over top of us, so that's why our rain chances aren't as good as they could be. Uh, but I think by tomorrow morning it will be uh, fairly wet, at least to start. So here's how the forecast looks. Uh, we've got clear skies, mostly clear skies, I'd say around 6 o'clock, but very quickly those clouds fill in tonight. And as early as midnight, we're looking at some showers out west, places like Del Rio, Rock Springs, could see some showers overnight. And then by 7 o'clock, uh, the rain starts to move towards San Antonio, some pockets, uh, maybe, maybe heavier showers. Uh, there could be a rumble of thunder mixed in there, uh, but we're not expecting really a, a lot of thunderstorm activity. And then by midday, a lot of this starts to move east. Now, by the afternoon, there could be some thunderstorms, but I think by that point, most of it is east of us. And we're going to get some clearing Friday evening and weekend. Turns out to be uh, pretty good. Temperatures today, uh, by 11 o'clock, we're at 63, up to 77 for a high. There's your increase in cloud coverage. You get towards 5 o'clock and uh, towards the 7 o'clock hour. And then the extended forecast, we're going to go 74 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain in the morning. So we've upped that rain chance just a little bit. We're feeling a bit more confident. This morning drizzle too. And then down to 68 on Saturday, but mostly sunny. We'll get another blast of some cooler air Sunday. It turns breezy and cooler. 58, the high on Monday after starting off at 34. So next week starts off a little more chilly uh, as we get just sort of uh, rapid fire fronts here. They're coming through every other day. Uh, that'll keep things for the most part, dry too. Okay. Wow, lots going on in that forecast. I have to find my gloves again <laughs> for the colder weather. Right? Plenty of time to do that. 619, 42 degrees. And the new PlayStation is one of the hottest holiday gifts this year, but there are new warnings about scams for some popular gift items. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Hey there, Robert Larson here. You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. How about no? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. If you're ready, I'll be waiting. Come and find me. I am what I live. My way. The new fragrance, Giorgio Armani. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. In this morning's GMA First Look, a big holiday shopping alert. There are new worlds to explore. PlayStation 5, one of the hottest holiday gifts this season, also now a major target for fraud. The Troy, Michigan Police Department sending out an alert that the PS5 is a scammer's dream, advising extreme caution, reporting that one theft actually occurred in front of the police station. 
And that's not the only scam consumers need to watch out for. Ron Kroll says after he finished buying presents for his grandchildren, he got a call claiming to be from Amazon. It said I had a charge for $799 and some change on my Amazon account. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know to outsmart those holiday scammers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Delta is changing its policies to allow more flexible travel plans. The airline announced it is extending its no change fees for all tickets through the end of March. For travel originating from North America, the change fee has been permanently eliminated. And to ensure safety, middle seats will continue to be blocked through March 30th. Scientists believe a new species of whale has been discovered in Mexico. They took this underwater video showing three whales west of Baja, California. The scientists also recorded acoustic signals from the animals and say it does not match anything they have seen before. They say they are highly confident the video actually shows an entire new species. Scientists are now using genetic sampling to confirm that theory. And your morning sports Spurs announced their first three preseason games will be televised this year. Organization says they're offering the games on TV because fans will not be allowed into NBA arenas until January 1st at the earliest. First preseason game is this Saturday against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Spurs will take on OKC at 6 p.m. at the AT&T Center. And you can watch it live on Fox Sports Southwest. Soccer World lost another star today. Italian TV channel Rai says sports star Paolo Rossi died this morning. Rossi is a star of Italy's 1982 World Cup winning team and Brazilian great Pele called Rossi one of the best players the world has ever seen. He was 64 years old. A cause of death has not yet been announced. And time now is 626 and 42 degrees for now. Antitrust lawsuits could threaten Facebook's empire over social media. We'll learn more about the lawsuits the company is facing. And many of us put up Christmas trees for the holiday, but have you ever asked why we do this? In our next half hour, we're going to tell you the history of the common decoration. And Trans Guide as we go to break 10 at Woodlawn. We'll check back in with Officer Nick Solis of the San Antonio Police Department. to a big flooding problem at this Northside Hotel. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you how it all went down and how people ended up checking out. The FDA could approve a COVID-19 vaccine today, which means doses could be delivered to Texas within the week. We will see the timeline it will take to get everyone immunized in the Lone Star State. Outside with live cam up near 80 yesterday, dropped back down into the 40s, and Justin says wetter weather is on the way, but you would never know that by looking outside right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, December 10th. I'm looking forward to all the changes. Something different. Me too. Let's go, go straight to Justin right now. Get an update on our forecast. You think we'll make it through the morning and evening commute today without any problems? Yeah, it'll be quiet. I, and I, th I think this week we've sort of checked all the boxes, right? We've had chilly mornings. So if you like the cold weather, we've had that. We've had warm afternoons and now we've got some rain chances headed our way. Today will be another warm day. We'll get into the 70s, but more clouds this evening as humidity moves into the area and then a damp morning expected tomorrow where we could see some showers, and maybe some drizzle to start your Friday. Let's talk about those rain chances. 40% chance coming up tomorrow. I think that's mainly before the lunch hour and then another very slight chance on Monday or Sunday, I should say, although I think most of that's probably east of San Antonio. So our one real chance is that window tomorrow morning. Temperature wise, Right now, 42 degrees at the airport, 40 at Randolph, 32 Kerrville, 32 in Tarpley. Yes, we are off to another chilly start, and we'll see those temperatures rebound very quickly. 68 degrees at noontime, we're up to 77 for uh, a high later today with southeast chilly winds kicking in 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk a lot more about that rain and how that uh, leads us into the weekend, what it looks like Saturday and Sunday coming up here in just a few. Let's get over to Nick now and... Uh, 
with no rain quite conditions looks pretty good out there. Well, it, it does, Justin, but, but look right up here. Northeast, we got a little accident up there, just came out. Looks like it was called southbound I-35 at Walsham and Eisenhower, but it looks like it's going to be just north of there. And here's Walsham here, but it looks like it's right before 410 as we have this traffic build up. Looks like a one vehicle accident where a, a vehicle hit the, the barricade there. So get you more information on it when I can, but just keep you in mind, southbound 35 in between Walsham and Thousand Oaks, somewhere there. All right, eastbound I-10 from FM 46 to 1604, 25 minutes. I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to downtown, 13 minutes, not looking bad there. Trans guide time, here we go. We got 1604 and Hausman Road. Traffic starting to pick up all over the city. Still flowing smoothly though. 281 at the quarry, looks good as well. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Top story this morning, it seems that a sprinkler system that did its job a little too well at a north side hotel. Guests had to be evacuated due to flooding. This all happened at a Staybridge Suites near Loop 1604 and Stone Oak Parkway on the far north side. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier all this was triggered by a fire. Yes, that is according to the fire department. They say it was a fire in a microwave inside a fourth floor room. Well, they were able to knock that fire down very quickly, but the sprinkler system did its job and then some causing flooding from the fourth floor all the way down to the lobby. Well, let me give you a look at the video. The guests used to checking out about 11 o'clock in the morning at most hotels. Well, their checkout call came after 11 last night. That's when this all began. The fire department again says a very small fire, but the problem was caused by the sprinkler system, which then caused the flooding. Uh, guests were helped out of their rooms by the fire department, which also helped to mop up this hotel. The guests were then taken to a sister property from what we've been told. Everyone evacuated from this building. Now, just within the last half hour, I did see a couple of people who appeared to be employees show up. Uh, they stopped the blinking lights that we had going on. Those emergency lights are no longer flashing. I also spoke to one man who showed up here earlier uh, expecting to come to work. He says that he's a chef here and he thought he was coming in to make breakfast. It seems that something got lost in the translation and he didn't get the word. So he showed up here for work and was kind of surprised by the whole thing that the hotel is no longer open right now. Reporting live on the far north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A potential vaccine for the coronavirus could be approved today by the FDA. Our RJ Marquez breaks down a timeline of when we'll get the vaccine here in Texas and who will be first in line. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has said once a potential vaccine is federally approved, then the state should get its first shipment soon. He is targeting this upcoming Monday as the day that Texas should start receiving doses. Abbott expects Texas to get up to 1.4 million doses of the vaccine to start with a second shipment likely in January. The Pfizer vaccine is expected to be approved first, followed by a separate vaccine developed by Moderna. Moderna is scheduled to meet with federal officials on December 17th to get final approval. That will increase the supply, but it is still very limited. The state has already laid out plans for who will get the vaccine first. It will go to healthcare workers that have been separated into tiers. The first tier includes any hospital staff working directly with patients who are positive or at high risk for COVID-19. Long-term care staff working at nursing homes and assisted living facilities are in this tier as well. EMS providers and home health care workers who have direct contact with vulnerable and high-risk patients are also in tier one. Custodial staff is also included. There is a second tier if there is enough of the first supply remaining. This tier includes staff in outpatient care offices who interact with symptomatic patients and direct care staff in freestanding and emergency medical facilities and urgent care clinics. Pharmacy and public health staff who test for COVID or give the vaccine are in the second tier, along with people who provide mortuary or death services to those that have passed away from COVID related problems. And finally, school nurses are the last group of the second tier. Governor Abbott says the general public will not have a chance to get the vaccine until next spring at the earliest. We know you have a lot of questions, so check out ksat.com for the latest information, including our article titled Your Questions Answered about the COVID-19 vaccine in Texas. And don't forget, EC Romero is hosting a live stream with experts from Metro Health to give you the most up-to-date information about vaccines here at home. That starts tonight at 7. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, how many doses of the vaccine will Bear County get and when? Plus, which hospitals will be receiving those vaccines? RJ will have the answers at 9 after Good Morning America.
President Donald Trump is asking U.S. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas to argue a case seeking to invalidate millions of votes if the U.S. Supreme Court decides to hear it. It's according to a spokesperson for Senator Cruz's office. The lawsuit was originally filed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton before the president joined. Claims Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin used the pandemic as an excuse to ignore or suspend laws to protect the integrity of the ballot. President-elect Biden won all those states. A large consensus of elected officials and constitutional experts say the Supreme Court will not hear the unprecedented case, including Texas Senator John Cornyn. A state representative in the Hill Country says he will file a bill to hold a vote on Texas succeeding from the United States. Republican Representative Kyle Biderman says the federal government is, quote, out of control and does not represent the values of Texans, end quote. He says the Texas Constitution allows the people to reform or abolish their government. However, federal law and previous Supreme Court decisions say no state can legally succeed from the union. The stage is set for the possible Possible, possible breakup of Facebook. After years of government scrutiny, Facebook is now facing two massive antitrust lawsuits. The Federal Trade Commission filed one and 48 state attorneys general filed the other. Both suits accuse Facebook of abusing its dominance in the digital marketplace and engaging in anti-competitive behavior. Billions were thrown at smaller companies in an effort to get them to sell. The two most glaring examples of this unlawful scheme were Instagram and WhatsApp. Facebook bought Instagram in 2012 for $1 billion and WhatsApp in 2014 for $22 billion. Meanwhile, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg told Congress earlier this year that F Facebook promotes competition. The Minneapolis City Council is cutting part of its police budget. The city gathered national focus after the death of George Floyd sparked nationwide protests. Council President Lisa Bender says Minneapolis is taking, quote, concrete actions to transform community safety, end quote. However, the budget can still be vetoed by the city's mayor. The White House is changing the nation's environmental regulations in the waning days of President Trump's presidency. It's finalized a rule that could prevent the Environmental Protection Agency from passing stronger measures to fight air pollution and climate change. The rule would require a cost-benefit analysis of any future change under the Clean Air Act and prevent scientists from secondary benefits to policy change. New rules can be overturned by the incoming Biden administration. The World Health Organization launched a global initiative to stop people from smoking. It's called Commit to Quit and has a goal to help 100 million people to drop tobacco. The organization says the pandemic has prompted many tobacco users to want to drop the habit because smokers are at a higher risk of severe disease and death from COVID-19. Do you see this yet? After two scrubbed attempts, SpaceX successfully launched an experimental rocket from South Texas yesterday, but landing did not go so well. Take a look at the video. When it touched down, it exploded and burst into flames. That might seem catastrophic for a craft that's supposed to take humans to Mars one day, but SpaceX founder Elon Musk says failure is all a part of the process. Yeah, trial and error, but it looks scary still. <laughs> he said it was a successful ascent, so. Okay. He's half right, 640 right now, 42 degrees. And the Christmas tree is a yearly tradition for many of us. After the break, we're gonna see how the annual holiday symbol got its start. Six forty-three. Welcome back. We are now down to fourteen days, seventeen hours, and fifteen minutes or so. Thank you, Vanna. Right now, till Christmas. And from the tree that stands tall and beautiful in Travis Park to the humble Charlie Brown Christmas tree, it wouldn't be Christmas without the traditional timber. Sarah Costa did a little digging to tell us about the history of the Christmas tree. Christmas trees, they're part of the Christmas spirit, but when and how did they become a staple in the Christmas tradition? Well, it actually started a long time before Christianity. The winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere usually falls in late December. Ancient people celebrated the solstice like the Egyptians, Romans, and Vikings, all decorated for the solstice with evergreen boughs because it symbolized everlasting life. Fast forward to Christianity and the celebration of Christmas. Also in December, in the 16th century, Germans are credited for starting the tradition and bringing decorated trees into their homes for Christmas. So how did the tradition end up in the U.S.? We can thank the Germans again for that. 
The first record of one being on display in America dates the 1830s with German settlers in Pennsylvania. By the 1890s, Christmas ornaments were arriving from Germany and Christmas tree popularity was on the rise around the U.S. It was noted that Europeans used small trees about four feet in height, while Americans liked their Christmas trees to reach from floor to ceiling. The first Christmas tree at the Rockefeller Center was in 1931. Workers at the Rockefeller Construction Center put their money together to purchase a 20-foot tree because they said they were grateful to have jobs during the Great Depression. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Interesting. 645, 42 degrees. Let's check back with Officer Nick Solis. Ah, thanks, Steph. All right, things are looking good right now. All around the city, we have one accident working on, and it was, a, as I suspected, uh, the accident's going to be southbound at Thousand Oaks Drive there right before the 410 um, exit. So southbound 35 at 410, Thousand Oaks, whatever you want to call it. One vehicle accident on the main lanes. Hopefully they, they can get this cleared up soon. But as you can see right here, it's causing some very heavy traffic already, so expect a little bit of a delay. Take a look outside tenant pro rant looking really good right now flowing smoothly there that's always good news what else do we have tenant callahan looking great and let's do one more here what do you got for me trans guy 37 in jones on the southeast side looking good hey there yeah let's talk about trees a little bit uh you know it's been it's been a warm fall for the most part and so it's just now that we're starting to see some changes better late than never with some of these trees but it looks like this may be a red oak Yvonne sent this in and she says sun through the leaves they're slow to fall this year a little bit yeah and it's been warm last couple days thank you by the way for that picture take a look at the temperature extremes over the last 24 hours Kingsville yesterday in our general vicinity got up to 86 that was the high temperature across the country hottest place the cold uh, temperature yesterday morning was at Peter Sinks, Utah. That's generally where we see a lot of the cold temperatures, uh, at least we've seen over the last month, is up there in northern Utah. Negative 29. Pretty impressive. So the uh, temperature difference over the last 24 hours, 115 degrees from the low to the high. We'll see if we uh, set some more records here in South Texas today, or at least uh, beat out the rest of the country when it comes to heat. Shouldn't be as warm today, but warm nonetheless. Here's what we're watching for some changes. If you're hoping for a little bit cooler weather, this may bring it to us. Area of low pressure out over uh, Southern California and Arizona. You see the rain there. That is headed our direction. Should give us some rain chances as we get into tomorrow. We'll also cool us down a little bit as we get into Saturday. So that will be uh, the change. It will also allow for some increasing humidity this afternoon. In the meantime, still dry. Still really nice outside in the sunrise. Man, it's been good all week long. This is a, another great, beautiful colors. Uh, 42 degrees at the airport, 38 Stinson, 38 Kelly, 40 at Randolph. If you're heading out the door right now or sending the kiddos out the door, jacket is needed. You'll need it for a few hours this morning, and then it uh, warms up just like the last couple days by the afternoon. 43 Bernie Sage, 34 Boulevard, 42 in New Braunfels, 38 down there in Pleasanton right now. In some 50s out west, 53 Del Rio, and we're checking in at 40 in Gonzales. Uh, dew points low end, but uh, today is sort of a transition day in the sense that we'll see these numbers start to come up by six o'clock. Dew points have rebounded into the 50s and even 60s. And then by this evening, we've got a lot of humidity out there that's going to allow itself or allow for some clouds to, to build back in. And that sort of sets the stage as that storm system comes in to uh, get us some showers and maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder as we get into tomorrow morning. Uh, by six o'clock today, still very quiet. But notice by midnight, we've got clouds surging in here. We've got a few showers potentially out west. Places like Del Rio will be the first to see some of this activity. And then by 7 o'clock, showers spread east. That includes here in San Antonio. We've upped the rain chances to about a 40% shot, so scattered showers. And if we're not seeing rain, we'll probably see some drizzle too. Uh, so we do think it'll be a damp commute. And then by midday, the rain is pushing east. We should see some clearing late in the day on Friday the weekend's looking pretty good. I'll be just a little bit cooler. Forecast for the rest of today, 72 by 1 o'clock, 77 the high temperature. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And temperatures will not be as cold tomorrow morning. In fact, 60 the low tonight into tomorrow morning. 40% chance of rain, as we mentioned. A little cooler Saturday, cooler yet on Sunday with another front. Breezy. There could be a couple showers with that front too, but I think it's mainly east of San Antonio and then cooler on Monday with a high of 58. Yes, yeah, Steph, so you do have like two, three, four mornings to search for the gloves I, well, before good. you really need you them again. Yeah. I'm glad because they are 
Missing. They are. They're <laughs> missing in action, huh? Yes, they are. All points bulletin for Steph's gloves. 649, 42 degrees. And coming up, high school football games can bring out the best in young athletes, but also the worst in people in the stands. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to take a closer look at how parents may be to blame for a national shortage on referees. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up as we take a live look at our sunrise on your early Thursday morning. Thanks so much for starting your day with us here on KSAT and GMSA. We'll be right back. Checkout time came about 12 hours too early for guests at this Northside Hotel. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The guests here at the Staybridge Suites were evacuated due to flooding late last night. The firefighters say that that was all caused by a small fire inside a microwave oven. Uh, late last night, about 11.45 is when they got called. Well, that fire triggered the sprinkler system, which then didn't know when to shut off. There was water dripping from the fourth floor all the way down into the hotel lobbies. So everyone here at this hotel near Loop 1604 and Stone Oak Parkway had to be evacuated to a sister property. The fire department stuck around to try to mop up some of the water, but as of right now, that hotel is still closed. Uh, we understand again that this was due to a fire which triggered the sprinkler system. Reporting from the far north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to an update on a deadly shooting we first told you about yesterday morning. Bear County Sheriff's deputies have arrested three people in connection with the death of 24 year old Joshua Fowler. Deputies tell us Lone Star Fugitive Task Force arrested 23 year old Devon Wooten, 46 year old Jennifer Wooten Blankenship and 59 year old Williams Blankenship at a motel in Guadalupe County. Bear County Sheriff investigators say all suspects are facing first degree murder charges and have all been booked into the Bear County Jail. The shooting happened at a home in Davos Road in far southeast Bear County on Tuesday night. Deputies tell us that Fowler got into an argument and was then shot in the upper torso. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, nine months into the pandemic, live performance venues are still struggling, but there is an effort underway to help them. That's the subject of this week's new episode of Case It Explains. Myra Arthur joins us live from her home to debrief that episode. Plus, we're going to check in with her to see how she and her family are doing after her husband and her son tested positive for COVID. And that's coming up at 9. Right now, it's about 5 till. Here's Nick. Mark, traffic getting backed up southbound all the way from the 410 eastbound. Um, exit ramp from 35 all the way back to Judson Road. Look at that very red on the screen there. And uh, here's a live look 35 at Thousand Oaks right now. Expected delay. We got two lanes blocked there if you're heading there. Uh, Justin. Thank you, Nick. And temperatures today up around 68 by noontime, 77 for a high southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Some increasing clouds tonight into tomorrow. We're expecting that chance for rain tomorrow morning. 40% shot with some drizzle possible. It does get a little cooler over the weekend. 68 Saturday, 65 on Sunday. Nick, Justin, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us today and have a good day. And we'll see you back here at 9.